Hello and welcome back. If you didn't see the previous live, you missed it. We deleted it. <laughs> but welcome back, everybody. If you are new to the channel, my name is Tanya. We do talk true crime here daily. And if you don't mind, try to hit the like button. YouTube is kind of down tonight. So um, when you hit the like, it rejects it. So give it a try. See if that happens to you. Really pretty cool, huh? <laughs> pretty good way to put that. So thank you for coming back. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, YouTube is screwed up tonight. I didn't realize it because I haven't been on YouTube for once in my whole life. Like, really, I haven't been. I usually am on. I saw that Deets was live. I was wanting to jump in that chat and I was like, don't do it. You'll never come out. You'll never come out. I'll be gone until my live. <laughs> yeah, the re it says resources has been exhausted. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on? What does that mean? One like and it's me. I know I try to like my own video and it said no. I was like, what? So if you guys um, are subscribed to the channel, make sure, like double check that you're subscribed. I guess it's unsubscribing people. I don't like that. I don't like that. But as long as you guys can talk through the chat and you guys can hear me, okay, then we're good. I can see you, Mystic. Thank you for letting me know that everybody in the, everyone was down on YouTube. <laughs> nice to be seen. Is the other chats, are they like you can't see each other or? And that's okay. Hey, Ladybug. You know, Rhonda. Then we have two Ladybugs in here. And welcome back, Jan. Welcome back, uh, Mary Beth. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to see you guys. I won't go through all your names again, but you know who you are. Hey, Selena. I think you were new. Hey, Callie. I think we had some new people. Um, Amanda, Mel Mac. And I don't be like, she's rude. She didn't say hi to me. I said hi to you in the other live. Queen Olive, Jana. <laughs> Curious Kit. Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Linda. You can hear? Okay, awesome. Yeah, YouTube's doing something funky and we don't know, but we're here for it. I mean, I, it says I have four people in the chat on this one. It says I have eight in the chat over here and we know there's more people in the chat than that. So that's fine. Watching from Tennessee. Awesome. Awesome. Very close to what all the, everything's going on around that area, it seems like. We've got two in Tennessee right now. We've got Summer Wells. we got Sebastian Rogers. Um, man. We got a lot of got a lot of people that we we cover on this channel as well. I feel like we cover a lot. Um, I am gonna pull up the the people that we're gonna oh, I know you're not Selena. I'm at like new to the chat tonight because we had a different live going and we had to take it down. It was it was kind of ugly. It was like us just sitting here for 10 minutes, like what's going on? Um, we are gonna talk about though Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler tonight. Um, if you guys don't mind, like I said, hit the subscribe, hit the like, we'll get right into it. Um, these are our four suspects. They've been arrested day before yesterday. They got arrested for the deaths, the kidnapping deaths of Julian or Jillian, sorry, um, Jillian and Veronica. So these guys are Cole and Cora Twombly up at the top. And then we have Tad Cullum and his beautiful girlfriend, Tiffany Adams, who is the grandmother in all of this, you know, because you can't beat that. Okay. Awesome. As long as you can see and hear me, we're good. And as long as you guys can like chat with each other, I'm good too. So that's all that matters. If the likes are not there, we'll come back and we'll deal with that another day. Um, but they are going to be in court tomorrow. So we do have a court date for them tomorrow at 930 central time. So that's going to be, um, 1030 Eastern standard time. So I will be on if it's, I should have looked while we were in that little break, but I didn't have time. I'm going to look before the end of this live to see if it's going to be covered live, like broadcasted. I'm sure it is. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, and we'll get to see all four of them tomorrow. So let's see. Um, this says it's a code X. I don't know what that means. So if you guys know what that means, let me know. It says restricted, completed on 415, code X. Like, I feel like that means like segregation or something. Like restricted. I don't know. You lost all your subscriptions, Aries? What is going on? I'll have to go to YouTube and go to my page. Like, this is weird, guys. We usually don't, <laughs> don't have to do this, but it's like, this is weird. Wow, it says that eight people are watching Deets. Okay, yeah, we're just going to keep on trucking it. Because <laughs> we all know that she has like 300 people in there right now. So we'll figure that out another day. Just maybe throw a one in the chat if you're here. And then I can count them later. But um, I want to go ahead and go through this with you guys. We were That's what we were doing on the last live before we got shut down. But on April 16th, which is today, um, just a few hours ago, 
the um, office of the Oklahoma chief medical examiner, he did positively identify the two deceased persons from Texas County as 27 year old Veronica Butler and 39 year old Jillian Kelly. Our thoughts and prayers are with their loved ones, along with everyone throughout their community. Um, it's really sad. You know, they went to go pick up Veronica's children for a custody, like a visitation, a supervised visitation. Um, and then they are brutally unalived. I mean, they are cut off from a, on a road by Cole and Cora, you know, they're, um, they have like a journey or whatever detour, like over to that road that they were found on, um, or their car was found on. It's just, it's very eerie. It's very sad. I, I just think the whole thing is, Oh, sorry. Extremely sad. Um, I did put together a presentation for you guys tonight. So I'm going to like break down each person and how they kind of, um, fit in. Oh, just type one. If, um, you're here that way I can, I'll know how many people are kind of here, like a rough, rough estimate since the likes not working. I should put that on there. I should put that on there. Maybe I'll put that on a banner. Like we're all having technical issues. Don't come for us. Um, but news nation, they did a, they did a broadcast already. You already know this. They already did a broadcast. Leland was on it seven o'clock, seven 30. Um, but it's just going to confirm what I kind of just told you about the, you know, the women being found. Um, and then I do have like some stuff we'll read and then we'll read through the PCA. Of course, we'll just read through the PCA. That's it. All the reading and then we'll play some videos. So I'll make it better for you guys. <laughs> it's not all reading, but if these documents are so interesting, there's so much detail. There's so much in them that, I mean, we really, we read through them last night, but I feel like we, there was a lot that we kind of missed. I feel like. So I'm going to play this and we'll see um, what he has to say, which I already know because I watched it. <laughs> Back with breaking news on the two missing moms, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation announced the two bodies they found earlier this week were Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. We'll put their pictures up in a second. A group called God's Misfits have been charged in the deaths of the two women who disappeared in Oklahoma. This is the Misfits mugshots. On the far right is Tiffany Adams. Tiffany Adams is not only the grandmother of the murdered woman's children, but she's also the former chair of the county's Republican Party. Adams accused of being one of the masterminds behind the murders, researching stun guns, portraying burner phones, planning multiple murder scenarios. How does a seemingly normal woman become one of God's misfits and eventually murder the mother of her grandchildren? In an exclusive statement, Veronica Butler's attorney has told News Nation. This case highlights the conflict, stress, and magnitude of decisions that go into any child custody case. This was case was contentious from the beginning. It became increasingly contentious as time went on. So unfortunate, I'm so deeply saddened by the loss of my client, Veronica. I know all she ever wanted was to love her children. News Nation senior correspondent, Brian Enton, is in liberal Kansas looking into this. Um, God's Misfits is sort of one of the more catchy names in, in all of life. And the mugshots fit, Brian, as I'm sure you found out traveling through Kansas. Um, was this group formed for this purpose, or were these people who were sort of always a little out there um, and had some unusual views and were planning unusual things, and this just was how they got caught? Well, a few interesting things. First of all, Eland, um, there are a lot of people in this area who are anti-government. I mean, I've been talking to people here for the last day, and that's not unusual. But the God's Misfits group is extreme. Uh, it does exist in this area. Uh, they have meetings on the Oklahoma-Texas line, and they believe that they only have to follow God's law. That's what I found out today. They don't believe that they have to adhere to the law of the land um, or the state laws. They only have to adhere to God's law, which could have something to do with why they thought they'd get away with this. By the way, uh, when you were setting up who these, who these uh, folks are, I mean, you might not be able to tell from the pictures, but they are very powerful, influential people uh, in this area, Leland. They own massive, massive amounts of land. They're involved in different kinds of businesses. Everyone knows them. Everyone that we've talked to for the most part feared them. Uh, and some people even did know that they were in this group, uh, God's Misfits. I so the grandmother, um, grandmother is a congresswoman or something. Like she's a chairman of the board there in their county. So yeah, when they say that these people know people, they they definitely know people. 
I I, I didn't really believe it at first. I kind of did, but I didn't because I'm from a small town where people like this, they, they do have a lot of money and they are kind of powerful, but I didn't realize just how much land they had and how much, how many people are actually, I mean, how these people are actually running this place. Like they're, they're running this little town. People are scared of them. People are intimidated by them. But I still don't know about her son because I mean, you know, if you believe gr the grandmother, the great grandmother of the, you know, the kids, she says that he knew about it. Wagner knew Wagner Cole. He knew all about it. Um, but then if you believe him, then, you know, he says he didn't tell his grandmother that. So it's like, who do you believe? You know, you can't have it both ways. I heard a creator talking about that earlier and they were trying to have it both ways. I was like, no, you can't do that. That's why we're talking about this again tonight. Cause that misinformation station was out in full force <laughs> the last 24 hours. I was like, what's going on? You can like it now. Oh, Selena, thank you. Everybody Spoke try to like to the it. Municipal Hopefully judge everyone here, will come the in. Judge <laughs> who was very good friends and a business the partner judge. with one of the suspects. Again, shows Tad. you how small town this is. Uh, listen to what he told me, Leland. The, the way I understand it is they got God behind them and they make their own laws. But now, again, that's hearsay. Uh, I, I, I never knew about them. That's what you're hearing from other people in town. That's what I'm hearing from other people. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still, I'll say it again. I'm blown away that this even happened. I, I just can't. Tad was a very good friend of mine. I'm not going to say was a very good friend of mine. He is a good friend of mine. But this just blew me away. That's the judge, Leland. So Brian, that is the judge, Leland. An interview uh, the in a municipal car? judge here. <laughs> I uh, love Leland. <laughs> Why are you well, doing that's a good in the question. Car? He was actually just passing by the judge. I had met him at his house yesterday, and today he decided he did want to speak, so he just got in the car with me, which kind of made it quick and, and easy to do because he was on his way to lunch. Okay. Um, but that judge, who happens to be friends and business partners with one of the suspects, Tad Cullum, the judge was at the suspect's house when the raid went down with the SWAT team. The judge had a shotgun put in his face. Uh, and was there when the raid happened. So, I mean, it's like this whole story is just, it's so bizarre and crazy. Leland. So are these guys misfits people? So there, there's more to this group than just these four, right? Um, are we to believe that they, they have other things planned, that there's, there's other five. bad things they're willing to do if they're allegedly involved in murdering this person? Or was it sort of like they were God's misfits during the day and at night they just decided to hatch this double murder scheme? So this is my sense, Leland, the God's misfits component to this, the religious cult, I think is separate from what caused the murder. The murder really does seem to have been caused with those two moms because of the custody battle. And I think it just. I think the custody battle had something to do with it, but I think the uh, cult like behavior of these five individuals, because I'm going to say five, they um, it's just it's eerie, you know, they. They relied on each other, I believe, and their faith in that cult, like whatever God's misfits. Um, I've never heard of it before. I think this is the only group. I don't think that there's like a bunch of these people out there. You know, I think it's literally just these li this little group of like people, five people. But apparently they got five people more than I got. I'm just kidding. I got 15,000 of y'all. <laughs> came out through all of that that they were in the god's misfits we got a bigger group. army and i do think that may have had something to do with the fact that they thought they would get away with this uh because at the end of the day you know they believe they only had to adhere to uh as what they call god's for one motley crew. thanks for watching oh, that's funny yeah they are aren't they yeah i keep grinding up i'm pretty sure they did too jim joe's waco yeah someone said that the other night and it didn't hit me like i was like yeah, no. And then I'm like, when I got the live, I was like, yeah, no, this really does. I mean, other than the officers didn't have to pull back for this one. They went in, you know, with their their guns a blazing. I mean, even the judge, you'll hear this later, even the judge was there. When they were, two of them or three of them were arrested, the judge was at their house. That judge. I was like, no way. No way. Like, what's the what are the odds that they're that powerful that they have the judge there? 
the same day that they get arrested. I mean, you know what I mean? Like that just doesn't seem like, I don't know. That just seems a little eerie to me. If I was that judge, I would not be calling, consider them my friends anymore, but he considers them still his friends. That's what he said, or his friend. You'll hear that too. And I'm like, uh, what'd you just say? If any of my friends were in jail for this and I knew all the facts, I read that PCA as a judge, as a judge, not even as a judge, I read that and I'm like, uh, come on now. It's, it, you know, he thinks that maybe he thinks that these people aren't going to, aren't guilty. I don't know. Very weird. But I do have that interview and I'll play that later on. Um, I also, I have a couple of different things to show you guys, like the misfits. Um, sorry, I'm trying to pause them all because they all kind of um, turned on. Okay. And then I have like a short video at the end to show you guys. So let's do this. Um, I did make this presentation because, you know, I'm just so good at these presentations. Just kidding. I'm really not, but um, I like to make them anyway. Now, how do I present it to you? I'm trying to figure out why am I like not figuring that out? Okay. There we go. I don't want to record. There we go. That's very weird. It like is like backwards now. I don't know. They must have done something on here too. Okay, let me see. Sorry, that's taking me forever. We'll see if it does it. And if not, okay. We'll say if not, then I was just gonna go with it from that page. Hey, welcome in, Brian. Hey Siggy. Welcome in, everybody. If you guys are just now joining us, we're all kind of mixed up tonight. So if I'm backwards, the chat's backwards. It's because YouTube is backwards tonight. Something happened with YouTube. It's unsubscribing people from the channels. And um, it's also not letting people like the video. I think it's now letting them do that, let you guys do that. Um, so make sure that your, subscri your subscriptions are all up to date, like you're subscribed to all your channels because they are unsubscribing people from the channels. I've never seen this before. I've seen other people like blame YouTube and I'm like... No way, not YouTube. <coughs> I guess they do do it. So I'm going to go through the family tree with you guys. I have a few different ones to go through. And then I have some pictures of everybody at the end. Um, I try to make it as good as I could. <laughs> um, but, you know, your girl's got one eye. Vision's probably not the greatest. But um, I'm going to go through this and then we'll go through the PCA. It's only a few pages. Um, so it's not that much. It's not that much to read through. And we'll discuss that. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I will um, try to spend like 10 or 15 minutes at the end answering the questions that we all have. And it's crazy. YouTube is broke. I can't believe that. Um, so Debbie Knox Davis, and you're going to hear all these names in the, the PCA. So that's why I'm um, bringing them out to you guys. But Debbie Knox Davis is the grandmother of Wrangler. So it's going to be the mother of Tiffany. So she's going to be mentioned in here. Um, Tiffany Adams is one of the suspects, and she's the mother of Wrangler, who is the child's father. Then you have her boyfriend. So you have Tiffany and then her boyfriend, Tad. So you have like, these two here. And then you go down here, and then Tiffany's son is Wrangler Cole Rickman, and he's the father of Veronica's children. So you have Veronica here. She's a victim. She's the mother of Wrangler's children. They have two children. Veronica was on her way to pick them up. Um, and then Julian, Julian, I put Julian in there. Look at me. Julian Kelly, victim. It autocorrects. Um, sorry about that, guys. And then the Twombly family tree, because we have like multiple families involved in this. It's like the damn Hatfield and McCoys, except for you only have two on the other side. It's very, very sad. If you think about all the people it took to take down these two women, it's just, it's, it's sickening. They all fed off each other, I feel like. Um, so this is the Twombly family tree. So this is going to be Cole and Cora's. And I heard a lot of like stuff about this. So I'm going to try to um, make it, hopefully I can make it easier. So Cole Twombly has a son named Frank. And that's um, Cole's son. And it's Cora's stepson. And then you have Cora Twombly. And she has a daughter that's Cole's stepdaughter. So they both have children with other people. 
Um, and that CW is going to be mentioned in the affidavit as a witness. She's going to give a statement, a, a big statement that's going to play like crucial in this case, I feel like. Um, she's probably going to be their star witness. So then you have Clint Twombly, and he owns the flatbed truck that they took with them that day. They took with them a pickup truck, and they took a flatbed truck when they left. So he's the owner of the flatbed truck. These are God's misfits. We got Tiffany Adams, Tad Colum, Cole Twombly, Cora Twombly, and a guy named Paul Grice. Now, I don't know if Paul has anything to do with this, but he's mentioned a lot in the PCA by CW. So if we're taking her at her word, she said he was involved. That's what she said. So um, the babysitters. So the, they had a couple babysit the kids that Veronica was her kids, Veronica's kids. She was supposed to pick them up that Saturday. And they, Tiffany took them to the babysitter's house, Lacey Cook and Barrett Cook, and dropped them off and did not pick them up again until 12 o'clock noon the next day. So plenty of time after, you know, this, they could have had time to do what they needed to do and get home. And the um, Cora and Cole, their daughter, CW, says that they arrived back home around noon. So I take for that what you will. But the property they were found on is Jamie Beasley's property. And so Cole rents property from him, and then he has property like adjacent. It's a lot. <laughs> I feel like this is a lot. Everyone's going to be like, everyone's probably like, who the hell is what? <laughs> but, you know, we'll get there. And then you got their mugshots. Tiffany Adams and Tad um, Colum, and then you've got the Twombleys. Beautiful couple. I'm going to grab my drink really quick. Sorry. I literally didn't have to walk that far. Thank you guys for being so patient. I appreciate it so much. I just needed a little drink because I'm going to be reading. And I feel like my voice is like going out. YouTube is trying, YouTube down is trending on Twitter. Has cause of death. So that hasn't, no, Callie, cause of death hasn't been released yet, but just that they were um, identified. I'm wondering how long it'll take. I'm sure that they already have it. I mean, I wonder if they could tell um, by looking at them or if they had to like go internally because of the, the decomp, you know, I don't, I don't know. Oh, thanks, Dreamcatcher. You're so sweet. <laughs> I, if I highlight your comments, I is it highlight them? Highlight them? Oh, it does. It's working faster. Okay. YouTube down. That's so funny. I was like, can someone go to YouTube and hashtag YouTube <laughs> and be like, uh, YouTube's down? Because I thought it was just us. So that's all I made for you. That took me like so many hours. <laughs> I don't know how that took so long and that went by so fast. But you know that'll happen. But um, if you guys need me to, I'll go through back through the family trees and stuff for you guys. Because it is a lot. It's a lot. Um, and as I'm reading the PCA, I'm going to break it down for you that even more. That way you guys will know what's going on. Because this case is just getting started, I feel like. Um, I feel like there, there may be more arrest. There may be this, you know, God's misfits that have something to do with this. Um, I feel like this is going to be, if, I don't think they're going to plea out. I think they're going to take it to court. They're going to take it to trial. They are going to act like fools. I feel like until like the, the end, the bitter end. <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm sounding like, Callie. I feel like I'm like, I have a, th a frog in my throat. That's exactly what it is. It's allergies. Cough. <clears throat> Cough a little bit. Maybe that'll help. It didn't. <laughs> so that's who we're going to be talking about this evening. Now, I did go over to, um, let me grab her Twitter. Let me grab her YouTube. Actually, I don't know which I share. I'll grab her both. So last night, Jan um, Jan Janet came in the live and she was like, uh, Tanya, Grizzly has the documents. And I was like, oh, really? Because these ones are terrible. The ones I just got done reading. <laughs> so um, I came over here and I was like, oh, she does have like the documents. Um, and I hadn't gotten them yet. So good for us. So I'm going to go over to her Twitter and drop her Twitter in the chat for Grizzly. And then I'm going to go over to her YouTube page and grab her link for her YouTube as well. 
I'm sure that all of you guys um, are subscribed to her, but if you're not, go over there, subscribe. She's really good at what she does. And there you guys go. That's her YouTube channel. She's really good. Um, so I'm going to use her documents because they're a lot better to read. They're better on my eye. I'm sure they're better on your eye because like those other ones were kind of bad. Now I did go through and highlight it again and I was going to take pictures because it wouldn't let me highlight on this because um, of the watermark. So I'm going to just tell you when there's an important part, but the whole damn document is really important. I mean, it's all like edge of your seat. Like what, what's happening next? It's one of those. Um, so all of them are charged with the same charges. Now three or three out of the four PCAs are the same. So Cole, Cora, and Tiffany's are all the same. But when you get to Tad's PCA, it has an extra two paragraphs at the end. Um, a lot of people I don't think are seeing that. I just, I just read the documents. Actually, I printed them all out and I went through them to see what the difference was, um, last night. So that's the difference. Um, so Tad has the actual like disposal part of it on his, um, on his PCA. So that's whose PCA we're going to read through tonight. And lucky for us, it's the first one up. So they were all charged with two counts of M in the first degree with deliberate intent which that's what the first degree is. Um, count three is kidnapping. Count four, kidnapping. Count five, conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. So, um, and it says here, by conspiring and agreeing with Tiffany Adams, Cora Twombly, and Cole Twombly to commit the crime of murder in the first degree, a felony on or about, on or, about or between the 13th day of February 2024 and the 30th day of March 2024 by arranging and planning the deliberate, intentional, and unlawful taking away of the life of Veronica Butler and or Jillian Kelly and the defendant and or co-conspirators did purchase burner phones, stun guns, and traveled to the area of Highway 95 in Rhode L, County of Texas, Oklahoma, in furtherance of the conspiracy. Yeah, so, and they're dumb criminals. So we said on the live, when we were talking about this case, um, I said, I can't wait to see their Google searches. We've got them. We've got searches. We've got searches. Um, but I, I did say I thought they were buried with concrete on top. I don't know why I thought that, but I did. And that's kind of what happened. So it's very, this case is very eerie. There's a lot of things that we called out. We called and we were like, you know, like grandmother, grandma. Couldn't help but decide side eye or after we read the court documents of the child custody. If we wouldn't have read the custody I wouldn't have thought about her at all. But when those custody, child custody papers came out and there was just like, a, we only got a few of them, but we did get some. They were telling. I was like, grandma, what you been doing, girl? Like you're doing the mostest. Like the most. I don't, I don't get it. Um, oh, I didn't see that it puts their height and weight on here. So 5'11", 236. Kind of a big dude. And so, um, like I said, all of these read the same except for the last one or, or the last page on this one. So, um, but it says here, I am Special Agent Jason Ott of the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations. I have been a law enforcement officer in the states of Kansas and Oklahoma for approximately 27 years and served in the capacity of an investigator for over 20 years. I have read and prepared certain official investigative reports and statements of witnesses regarding the above named defendant. And from these statements and reports, it appears as follows. And he's really like, he didn't even need a large PCA to like, um, like to make me feel like I, I'm like, oh, wow, this is a lot of information. Um, it's only four pages and it gives you everything you kind of need to know. On Saturday, March 30th, 2024, this is the day the ladies went missing. The Texas County Sheriff's Office requested Oklahoma State Bureau of investigation, the OSBI, investigative services with the suspicious disappearance of Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39, from Royal Texas County after their vehicle was found abandoned near Highway 95 and Road L, south of El Elkhart, Kansas. Butler and Kelly were traveling to Oklahoma from Hugoton, uh, Hugoton, Kansas. I don't know why I can't say Kansas. I couldn't get it out. Um, so they were on their way to get, you know, to go pick up Veronica's children. 
Interviews were conducted related to their disappearance, and it was discovered that Butler was in a problematic custody battle with Tiffany Adams for the custody of Butler's two children. I don't even know who let her have a say in the damn thing. Well, we do. It was a judge. But, I mean, I would hate to be fighting with the mother of my father's children. That doesn't even make sense at all. I'd be like, get out of here, woman. Um, but she's a lot smarter than I was at times. So, I mean, you know, she didn't come out of the house. So um, the father of those children was Wrangler Rickman Adams' son. Butler's visitation with her children was court-ordered to be supervised every Saturday. Adams had a particular person she preferred, preferred to supervise those visitations, and that was Cheryl Brune. So every time up until this time, Cheryl Brune Pretty much every time, Cheryl Brune was the lady that was there. The court ordered Adams to pay Brune to supervise visits if that was who she wanted to present. Otherwise, Butler was to choose and pay for the person to supervise. So if Tiffany picked the grandmother, she had to pay. If Veronica picked that time, she had to pay. Adams said Brune was unavailable to supervise the visitation on March 30th, 2024, so Butler was required to arrange the supervision with one of her three approved individuals. Butler contacted Kelly of Hugoton, Kansas, and planned to have her supervise the visit. Butler told family members she was going to pick up her children from Adams at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning at Four Corners, the intersection of Highway 95 and 64 West at location a location in Texas County, Oklahoma. Butler and Kelly left Hugoton, Kansas and traveled to Highway 95 and Road L about five miles north of Four Corners. So they got about five miles away from the gas station that they were supposed to meet them at. Butler and Kelly arrived at that location at approximately 940 hours. So 20 minutes before they were supposed to meet. Butler planned to bring her daughter to a birthday party, but after they did not arrive, the family began looking for Butler. So like I said last night, it wasn't her daughter's birthday. It was a birthday party that they were both going to. And I believe it was another family member. Where are we at? Um, so it says here, Melissa and Joey Padilla, who were Butler's family members, located Butler's abandoned vehicle just west of the intersection of Highway 95 and Road L. And I'm wondering if they, I'm assuming they went to the gas station and then went and found the car, but on the way to the gas station, I'm wondering if why they didn't see the car off of the road because it's so open and vast. Do you know what I mean? So I'm wondering if they may have may have came from a different direction and maybe they didn't pass the car and so they went that way, like, hey, let's just go the way that they drive normally. But I'm just kind of curious to that because, you know, it's such a, there's no trees or anything out there. You can see everything. And I feel so bad for them. They they found the vehicle. I mean, they found the vehicle. They found all that evidence that was there. They found, and you'll hear, you know, that Veronica's glasses were found in the middle of the road. Um, they saw all of that. And then they had to call police and tell them, like, oh. it says, um, they located Butler's aban abandoned vehicle just west of the intersection of Highway 95 and Road L. The Padillas then contacted law enforcement at 1209. So it was at noon, a little after noon the next day. And they were um, last, like, pinged, I think, at 940. Like, in that area, I think. Butler and Kelly left Huginson. Wait, where were we at? Sorry. I don't know where I was at. Oh, here we go. An examination of the vehicle and area surrounding the vehicle found evidence of severe injury. Blood was found on the roadway and edge of the roadway. So edge of roadway and on the roadway. Butler's glasses were also found in the roadway south of the vehicle near a broken hammer. A pistol magazine was found inside Kelly's purse at the scene, but no pistol was found. Now, do you think that she had a pistol? Like she, I mean, preacher's wife, I don't know. I don't want to say like preacher's wife wouldn't have a pistol. But new to the area, preachers, well, I don't know. Would you, you think she'd have a pistol? Maybe. But I don't think I don't think it was hers. I think that they might have put the magazine in there. Maybe they were going to try to frame her. I don't know. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they thought, like, if she doesn't show up, maybe they can spin some sort of story. I'm just trying to figure out 
why grandma thought she was going to get away with this, how she thought she was going to get away with this. Like, really, we knew it was you right away. Everyone knew it was you. We knew it. The investigators knew it. My dang dog knew it. We all knew it. And it was like, we didn't want to, we don't like to say that. We don't like to speculate about family members like real on this channel. Like, you know, they, but it was like, come on. It, you know, it was like, we shouldn't speculate, but we're kind of speculating. Um, so Adams told OSBI that on Friday night, March 29th, Rickman and Butler's children stayed the night with Barrett and Lacey Cook. So night before, Tiffany sends the kid over to these people, Barrett and Lacey Cook's house. And remember their names. Adam said she planned to pick them up that morning before visitation. So before 10 o'clock, she was supposed to pick them up. Adam said she called Butler at 9 o'clock to confirm the meeting, and Butler told Adam something came up and she was not going to make it. She had never missed a visitation before. So why would she miss this one? She, and you'll, she was already on her way to get her supervisor. Butler's phone records confirmed the call occurred, however. At the time of the call, Butler was in Hugoton, Kansas, at in the process of picking up Kelly to go meet Adams. So Veronica was on her way to go pick up Jillian, the court, uh, you know, the court appointed supervisor, and they were going to go meet Tiffany to get the kids. Adams stated that she was home at the time that Butler and Kelly went missing. Adams picked the children up before 12 o'clock from the cook's residence. OSBI interviewed Brune and she said she was available to supervise that visit that day, but Adams told her to take a couple weeks off from the visitation so Adams could question the children related to how Butler's approved visitation supervisors were. There's a lot there. <laughs> um, the Cheryl Brune, the lady that was there every day or every week, she went every week. Tiffany tells her the week that she's supposed to, you know, she's supposed to be there Saturday, take, take a couple weeks off. I want to talk to all of the supervisors, apparently, that Veronica's bringing over and see how they are. Like, who gave her the right? And why didn't that lady be like, sure, I'm taking a vacation. Bye. Like, she didn't even say two crap. She didn't think too, 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 like twice about it. She just like was like, oh, vacation. Turn off my phone. You know? It's crazy. I don't know who lets that happen. Like, I don't know how they, I don't even know how that works. So if, what if you don't want to pay? You're like, you, you get them again. I don't know how that even works. Like, it sounds kind of, um, it just sounds exhausting to me. You know, like, are you getting them this week or am I going to get the person this week? I mean, I'm just sure that Veronica was ready to have her babies back. So we have here, um, Butler and Kelly's phone re records indicate their devices were actively sending signals to their carriers and, until approximately 942 hours, after which the devices were no longer seen by the networks and stopped transmitting. Neither phone was found at the scene or within the vehicle, and they are currently missing. Adams was last known person to communicate with Butler and was scheduled to meet Butler and Kelly for visitation at 10 o'clock on March 30th. So their phones went off at 942. I'm going to write that down, actually, because I think that they were already at the um, the house at that time. Like, I think that, that that comes up later. I've read this thing 40 times. I should know that they were their phones pinged at Beasley's the last time. Maybe it was the burner phone. So I'm going to write that down. What was it? 942. Okay. trying to see where we were at. Okay. Adams was the last known person to communicate. I read that part. Through the trial custody case, recordings were obtained where Rickman discussed death threats by Adams and Adams' boyfriend, Tad McCollum. So Wrangler Rickman is her son, and he's saying that Adams, his mom, and her boyfriend, Tad, were he was receiving death threats from them. The custody battle began in February 2019 with many hearings and court appearances. On March 18th, 2024 and March 20th, 2024, motions were filed requesting extended visitations for Butler. A hearing was scheduled to occur on April 17th, 2024. So within just, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, Butler's attorney informed OSBI that Butler was likely to receive unsupervised visitation with her children at that hearing. I think they should still have that hearing tomorrow. They should. They should still have it. Oh, thank you, Kelly, for becoming a member. I just saw that and I was like, probably forever ago. <laughs> I was on the other screen. 
Um, thank you, Jane, for gifting a membership too. Look at that. I'm like missing people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, you know, yeah, he's saying that his mom was harassing him and they are going through this, you know, custody battle. And so on March 18th and then March 20th, motions were filed requesting extended visitation for Butler. Um, and then, you know, they were going to get, she was more, more than likely her attorney said that she was going to get unsupervised visitation. At times, Adams, Tiffany refused to let Rickman have his children, even though Rickman had legal custody of them. Law enforcement previously responded to a call for service where Adams refused to give Rickman his children. Reportedly, the officer told Rickman he believed the children were better off in Adams' care. I would love to know that officer's name that said, I think that he, they shouldn't be in their father's care. They should be in their grandmother's care. Like, how bad off was her, was her son, I wonder? I mean, or maybe she just knew the officer, you know? Yes, squeaky wheel. Where is Paul Grace? He was part of the group. Yeah, he's definitely. And there's only five of them. So why are they going to leave out old bud? They're not going to leave out old buddy, Paul, Paul, Paul. They're not going to leave him out. I don't see that. They even brought in Barrett and Lacey, I believe. We'll get down there to that, too, because they were they're on here. They're up in this. They're up in this PCA. Um, Rickman's grandmother. So. This is kind of like the coup de gras. Rickman's grandmother, Debbie Knox Davis. So this is the great grandmother of the kids. And I don't know. I'm, I don't know if this is on the mom's or the dad's side, but I'm thinking this is mom's side. And it, I mean, so if this is mom's mom, she's going to lie for her kid. Probably. I don't know. Maybe not because her grandkid, but she's probably going to lie for her kid. If this is the dad's mom, then, you know, I don't see why she would lie, but this is what it says. She reported that in mid to late February 2024, Rickman told her that they didn't have to worry about the custody battle much longer because Adams had it under control. That Adams knew the path the judge walked to work and we will make we will take out Veronica at drop off. Rickman was confirmed to be in a real rehabilitation facility in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma at the time of the disappearance. The children remain in the custody of Adams. Rickman denied having that conversation with Knox. So Wrangler saying that conversation never happened, but Debbie, his grandmother, is saying that it did happen. So it, I don't know. You believe either grand, like you know, the great grandmother, which would be Rickman's Wrangler's grandmother, or you believe him. It's you know, that's it's a toss up. They're both probably not the greatest people in the world. <laughs> They're probably not. And thanks again, Jan, for gifting a membership. That was so kind. Okay, so um, I'll go back over. I'm just trying to get to the end of the chat. Sorry about that. Hey, Crown License. Hey, Brooks. Welcome in. I was like, what is going on with my cursor? I couldn't get onto the bottom of the chat. So, um, oh, okay. So he, Rickman denied having that conversation. Wrangler said he didn't have it. Now, I don't know. We're, we'll figure, I mean, it'll come out, but hook someone up to a lie detector. On April 1st, 2024, OSBI agents obtained a search warrant for Adam's cellular phone. OSBI agents performed an extraction on that device. Information, information gained from the device included web searches for taser pain level, gun shops, prepaid cellular phones, and how to get someone out of their house. Now remember that, how to get someone out of their house. On April 3rd, 2024, OSBI interviewed CW, age 16 years old. CW is the daughter of Cora Twombly. And Kobe White. So different dad. Cora is married to Cole Twombly. CW stated that she had overheard group conversations related to Butler not protecting her children from her brother, all in reference to an essay abuse or essay, you know, abuse allegation. I already said the word, so let's say it again. <laughs> CW advised that she was told by Cora that Adams, Colum, Cora, Cole, and Paul Grice were involved in the deaths of Butler and Kelly. Now, I don't know why she just brings, she's going to bring out his name if he's not involved. This girl has, I mean, what does she have to lose other than, you know, just one of them little uh, gods, misfits is out there somewhere. I mean, I don't think they're going to be doing much with just one of them out there. But, I mean, I could see where she was probably scared to say anything. Um, she stated that Adams had provided burner phones to use so they could communicate without using their personal devices. 
DW also um, saw two burner phones charging on Cora's nightstand in her bedroom. And that's the only part that gets me is she only got three phones. So unless, well, I guess the her, her and Tad could be borrowing one, huh? And then the couple, the Tomblies, and then Paul Grice. Hmm. Now that I thought about that in a different way. For some reason, I was thinking Tad and Tiffany had different phones, but they would probably be together. Okay, very interesting. Look at me thinking about stuff. I've read this thing seven, six or seven times now. I think it's my seventh. And I find something every time. On um, Okay, so CW described Cora Cole, Adams Colum, and Paul Grice as being part of an anti-government group that had a religious affiliation. Through OSBI investigation, it was, it was learned that they call their group God's Misfits. Regular meetings are held weekly at the Tombleys and the home of Barrett and Lacey Cook. Forgot about them. So they're involved. I should have put them. I knew that I knew there was um I knew I needed to add two more to that misfits, my misfits um diagram. So Barrett and Lazy Cook remind you they're having these weekly meetings at their house in the Twombleys. They're the two that were babysitting overnight Veronica's children. So did they know? Hey, keep the kids till around 12 o'clock the next day. I'll come get them after I'm done doing this. Or did they have no clue? And she was just like, can you watch the kids? Because I don't see how they wouldn't know if they're good friends enough for you to give their kid to, or your like grandchildren to, right? And you're in this club with them, this cult. Um, you're, they're going to surely know that Veronica comes every Saturday to pick up her kids and you're dropping them off on a Friday night. You would surely, they would surely know that. Like Veronica comes every Saturday. Why are we watching them tonight? Don't you need to get them up and ready in the morning? But I don't know. You tell me. CW was told on March 29th, 2024, that Cora and Cole would not be home in the morning hours when she woke and were going to be on a mission. So, yeah, they're telling their 16 year old daughter this, too. It's the mom. So it's she's telling her daughter, not no stepdaughter. It's her daughter. Like, I mean, I don't care if a step kid or not, but you know what I mean? Like, this is her own blood. Like, this is sick. We're going on a mission. Won't be here to make you breakfast, honey. I'm going on a mission tomorrow. I guess God's mission. I don't know whose mission is it. I guess it's Tiffany's mission. When CW awoke at approximately 10 o'clock, Cora and Cole were not home, but came home around 12 o'clock. CW knew that Cole and Cora took a blue and gray Chevy pickup owned by them in a blue flatbed truck pickup owned by Clint Twombly. So he had the flatbed. Um, and I, I had that on the little diagram when they left and returned in the same vehicles. They left and returned St. Bill's. CW was told to clean the interior of the Chevrolet pickup. CW asked Cora what had happened, and she was told that things didn't go as planned, but that they would not have to worry about her, meaning Veronica, again. CW was told that Cora and Cole blocked the road to stop Butler and Kelly and divert them to where Adams, Colum, and Grice were. So Cora, out of her own mouth, like CW was told you know, that Cora, and I'm sure that she's the one that said it because she's the one that was running her mouth, you know. Um, she said all of them were there, including Paul Grice. CW asked about Kelly and why she had to die and was told by Cora that she wasn't innocent either as she had supported Butler. The fudge? Are you kidding? Are you? She came, for, she was going to go for one, one visit. She was there for the kids and for Veronica, but I'm sure she was there more for like the kids, you know, like make sure everything goes well. CW asked um, about why she had to die. She said because she supported Butler. CW asked Cora if their bodies were put in a well. And Cora replied something like that. And we later found out that they were like buried under a dam. I still don't understand that. Maybe someone can help me out with that. I still can't get that. I thought that a dam ran all the way down. How would you get it under without getting water all through there? I just, I don't know how that would work. Very question. Very. I have a question about that. If what was the plan? If they didn't go to plan, I don't. Probably just shoot them. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like that. I think that her her plan. I don't even know if she knew her plan was going to work. Does she really? Was she really that like drinking the Kool Aid that much to where she thought she's had custody battles with this woman since 2019? 
One of the kids was only a year old when this started. And she thought no one was going to look at that. Maybe she thought this wasn't going to be like, maybe she didn't think it was going to hit like it did. Maybe she didn't know it was going to blow up. Maybe she thought it was just going to be a little small town thing. You know, she'll walk away none the wiser. But she's not very smart because it blew up. It blew up bad. I mean, good for the ladies. I mean, but bad for them. So um, CW also disclosed that other attempts to unalive Butler occurred during February of 2024 near Hugoton, Kansas. And that's where she lives. So they came to her in which Adams, Colum, Cole, Core, and Grice went to Hugoton, but Butler did not leave her residence. This is consistent with the web search discovered on Adams' phone about how to get someone out of their house. So Veronica was smart. She's like, no, I'm not coming out of my house. When she's, I don't know if she saw all five of them. If she just saw Tiffany, I mean, Tiffany would do it enough for me. I'd be like, I'm cool. I'm not coming out. Call, call my lawyer. You know? I want to know too, Miss Anonymous, about who the irresponsible judge is in this case. Yeah. <laughs> Tammy. Them dum dums can be good, though. But she'd be in a lot of them. I mean, I love dumb criminals. It makes me like, it makes me just happy for like, you know, if there's going to be victims out there, at least we've got dumb criminals like this, you know, just makes it easier to put them away. So Butler didn't leave her um, residence. So that's good. You know, um, she didn't want to leave that time. And I think this time she was just out there in the open. There was like nowhere to hide. Do you know what I mean? Like there was just nowhere to go. So according to Cora, the plan was to throw an anvil through Butler's windshield while driving, making it look like an accident because anvils regularly fall off of work vehicles. So they thought a big metal weight, like a big metal weight was going to do the trick. I don't know how many people it would take to pick one of those up, but probably pretty heavy. Let me see. Let's see, like the approximate weight, maybe. But oh, wow. 75 and 500 pounds. Okay, well, you know, it's between 75 and 500 pounds. <laughs> Cora is going to be the, she's the one of the suspects. She's Cora and Cole are the other two suspects. They're the ones that are married. Yeah, the other couple. So yeah, Stephanie, they're going to try to do that. They're going to try to throw an anvil at first. <laughs> um, I don't know how that was going to work. So maybe that's why they had the flat, but I was saying last night, maybe that's why they had the flat bed pickup. That way they could put the anvil on top of it. But that's just weird to me. Um, I don't see that working at all. So I'm thinking maybe they ended up using the hammer instead. And if the if if the, there's nothing in here about the window being broken, but we did hear that the window was broken, but there's nothing in the PCA about it. Um, so I didn't know if maybe they threw the hammer and it maybe hit the vehicle and broke, or it busted the windshield and broke somehow. I mean, I don't I don't know how there was a why there was a broken hammer there. That's the only I don't I don't know. That's very scary, though. While in Kendrick, Texas, interviewing CW and her brother, Cora and Cole arrived and tried to get access to CW and her brother. Cora was verbally aggressive and was very upset with your affiant that she was not granted access to CW and her brother. So the person writing this was like, she was pissed at me. <laughs> um, I wouldn't let her near her kids. Very smart. Cole exited the vehicle armed with a handgun and a holster on his belt. And I said last night, I wonder if that gun magazine is going to match this handgun. OSBI investigations show that Adams searched for gun shops on her cellular phone. A search of local gun shops showed Adams buying five stun guns at the Big R store in Guyman, Oklahoma. The purchase was made on March 23, 2024. OSBI investigations showed that Adams purchased three prepaid cellular phones from a Walmart in Guyman, Oklahoma on February 13, 2024. Valentine's Day, the day before. So she went to Walmart and bought the phones. I wonder if she used a credit card. I mean, I bet you she did. Is Does Walmart have a rewards card? Let me know if they do. I don't know if they do or not. I'm there, I don't go there but um, very often at all. But let me know if like Walmart has a rewards that you would scan. Because people be loving their rewards. You know, like they don't think twice about it. They just scan that reward on through. That'll get her. Hey, Renee. 
Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Frenchie. Welcome on in. Thanks for being here. Okay, so let me get back to this. OSBI investigation showed that Adams, keep reading the same thing, sorry. She purchased the three, paid, three prepaid phones and um, burner phones are traceable. <laughs> and these guys were living in 1991, apparently. So they bought three phones and they were identified as phone numbers ending in 5752, 9141, and 9085. Search warrants for information related to local or location services and phone usage were completed for each device. It was learned that all three phones were at the area where Butler's car was located and the last known location of Cut Butler and Kelly at the time of their disappearance. So all three phones were in the area at the last known location at the time that they disappeared. All three phones were powered on and accessed the, and access the cellular network for the first time at or near Columns residence at different times prior to March 30th, 2024. On March 30th, 2024, phone numbers 9141 and 9085 before Butler and Kelly's disappearance were at the Twombly residence prior to going to or near Columns residence. Let me write that. I didn't do this last night. I want to make sure I have it. Okay. At um, prior to going near Columns residence, Butler and Kelly's disappearance at ten o five and ten sixteen hours. So ten o five in the morning and ten sixteen in the morning. Phone numbers nine zero eight five and five seven five two were in the area at or near Columns residence. So that's going to be. Oh, I think. And then the 9085 is going to be Tad, I believe. And then the other phone is going to be maybe Cora. But I'm not sure. That might have been Tiffany's. After Butler and Kelly's disappearance on March 30th, 2024, between 1016 and 1035, it was determined that phone numbers 5752 and 9085 were at a property owned by Jamie Beasley. Below a dam... In the pasture where fresh dirt work was located by your affiant. So this is below a dam in the pasture. What? I don't get what they're saying there. Why do I not get it? Below a dam. Is this like a different kind of dam? Good night, Jan. That I'm thinking of? Let me know if y'all know. I mean, I'm really confused about the whole crime scene. Like the dam situation. Normally, you have a dam to sp stop water, right? But if it's, I, I don't really don't know. I'm going to have to look up how how dams work, I guess. Um, Beasley advised, so this is the, what's different about the PCAs. So if you go to Tad's PCA, it does have a little bit longer. Theirs all start um, at the end here of this um, paragraph. So it says here, um, concrete was moved from a location near Beasley's residence, approximately 150 to 200 yards below the dam where it was discovered that a hole had been dug and filled back in and then covered with hay. The location where Butler and Kelly disappeared from and where Butler's vehicle was located is approximately 8.5 miles from the location below the dam on Beasley's property, giving drive time from the location of where Butler's vehicle was located to Beasley's property, well within the 34 minutes between the time of Butler Kelly's phone, st um, phone stopping transmission and prepaid phone numbers 5752 and 9085 arriving at the dam on Beasley's property. Okay. All prepaid phones stopped transmitting on the mornings of March 30th, 2024 at locations near Twombly's residence and Beasley's property. Beasley advised that the dirt work was done with a skid steer by column on March 29th, 2024, and was possibly finished on March 30th, 2024 in the morning hours. Beasley knew that column left his skid steer on his property the night of March 29th, 2024, and when he awoke on March 30th at approximately 12 o'clock, the skid steer was gone. Who sleeps at till noon? 
On March 28th or 29th, 2024, Colum asked Beasley if he could cut down a tree, remove a stump, bury some concrete, do work where the concrete pile was and below the dam. I mean, it's kind of stupid to ask that question because um, two people are going to come up missing. They're going to look at grandma. They're going to look at you. Y'all are best buds. Then they're going to say, oh, you have another property. Oh, you have fresh dirt. Like, I mean, did he really think this is going to like work? I mean, and then you got Beasley over here. He's like, uh, well, this guy just tilled up the land with a skid steer and put some concrete in over here and hay and dump some dirt in there, all kinds of stuff. But I don't think that's suspicious. I'm not going to call that in. I mean, I'm sure Beasley would have called that into authorities eventually. He would have been like, uh, something's amiss. Hey, Ashley. Welcome in, everybody. I, I haven't been able to see the chat that much because I've been on this other screen. So, um, yeah, they, he did all that. Adams was with Colum at Beasley's property when that conversation was had. In a contact with Colum, your affiant learned from Colum that Adams is his significant other. Beasley agreed to allow Colum to do the work. Colum brought up the idea of doing the work to Beasley. On Sunday, March 31st, um, sorry, I'm stretching my legs. In the morning hours, Colum was at Beasley's house and told Beasley that people were looking at him for the disappearance of Butler and Kelly. So Colum tells Beasley, hey, they're looking at me for these two ladies disappearing. And he still doesn't think maybe I should call the cops about him uh, wanting to put fresh dirt over here in a pile with a skid steer. And then he says this. Colum told Beasley that he didn't want the police or people to cause problems for Beasley and said that all the skid steer tracks on his property without a skid steer looked bad. Beasley said if anyone asked, he would tell them that Colum had done tree and dirt work for him. Now, he probably didn't want them to say, he didn't probably want them him to say that. Yeah, he just did some tree and work dirt work for me. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe that's how they found them. It's very crazy. Um, but yeah, this is all of it. That's all of the um, PCA affidavit. I do have a couple of videos I was going to show you guys that's a, they're newer and then it'll kind of wrap all of this up <laughs> into like a bow because it's a lot to go through. So <clears throat> basically, Tiffany Adams, the grandmother, has been conspiring for months, if not years, to get rid of her daughter-in-law. Well, you know, the I, it just we're just going to call her daughter-in-law. It's easier to say that. Um, down to the point where she even threatened her own son. She kept the children. She stole the children once. I mean, she's a whole, she's a big problem. Huh. She's a whole ass problem there. She gets her friends and her boyfriend to divert these ladies off of the road somehow, you know, um, it sounded like Cor and Cole blocked the roadway and they got them to turn off of the road. Um, they got them to turn off the roadway, somehow got them out of the car and, you know, hurt them. And she thought this was all just going to work out for her. I just, I don't, I really don't get it. This is, the, that's literally what happened. She thought if she bought some burner phones, she got some stun guns, she got a few of her friends together, few vehicles. This wasn't, I mean, Anvil, this was going to go off without a hitch. Maybe she thought because she knows the judges in the area. I don't, she's, she was not thinking. She was not thinking. And it's not like she just thought of this one night and then did it the next day. No, she's been planning. She's been trying. She's been trying. You know? So they ended up um, charging her or charging all of them, sorry, with murder in the first, with two of those, two kidnapping and one conspiring. So that's what I have for you there. Um, and then all of these are the same. I'm actually going to put this in the chat if you guys want to. Look, look at this. It'll take you like right to the Dropbox. Should work for you. Yeah, everyone knows everyone. Yeah, everyone knows everybody. They really do. It seems like, huh? huh. I was reading the chat a little bit. Okay. Um, then I, there's some videos I was going to show you guys from News Nation because they've really been covering this case hardcore. They've been doing a really good job. Um, no one else was covering this case for the longest time other than like some local channels. And then we had News Nation come in and they really took over. Um, they 
went to the location. They had Nancy Lou out there. Um, and now they have Brian Enton. So must, you know, give her a break. Cause I mean, the poor woman's been out there for days talking to people. So, um, they must've given her that some time off and they have Brian Enton out there now. So good reporting, really good reporting. Um, this first video is going to be, has Brian Enton in it, I believe. Yeah, it does. Um, and they're just going to go over the group that they're in this misfits, God's misfits group. I mean, what a name, what a name. Now, is this the property? I wonder, because these look like skits, tears, like marks. I don't know. But I don't see a dam out there. What the hell is the dam? I want to know what that is. Could it be like a watering tank? Something different than that kind of a dam? Let me know. Or am I just nuts? For Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, who were last seen March 30th, investigators recovered two bodies in the area. Okay, I watched this earlier. I don't remember them while telling they that. have not yet been positively identified Four people are now charged in connection to the disappearances, and we're finally learning some more about them and their pasts. News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Inton now live there in Oklahoma. Brian, obviously this case continues to unfold, to develop. What is the latest there as of right now? Yeah, there's been shocking developments, it seems like, every day, Nicole. Sorry to join you from the car. We've been racing around, chasing different leads, going back and forth between Kansas and Oklahoma. All of this happening really right on the border between the two states. Uh, I want to show you, though, we have some new video, this right here. Uh, this is video from one of the properties connected to one of the suspects. His name is Tad Cullum. He's the boyfriend of Grandma Tiffany Adams, who's sort of been at the center of this whole thing. We were over at that property. Uh, there were a number of police officers there, and they actually towed, you can see right there, they were towing a white trailer. Uh, there is something significant about that trailer, we are told, and that is the reason police wanted uh, to take it into evidence. And what's interesting, Nicole, is we have heard from witnesses that they saw that white trailer in the area of where the two moms were killed. So it is possible that that is the trailer that was used to transport the bodies. That is obviously something police are uh, investigating uh, right now. Again, it's it's been a wild couple of days as this has come together. Uh, Grandma Tiffany Adams had been planning to kill the mother of her grandchildren. According to the affidavit, there was this very, very contentious custody dispute that had been ongoing. Uh, that seems to be at the center of this whole thing. We've learned that there was a previous attempt and plan to actually uh, kill the victims before. That's something that we continue to look into. Uh, and both, uh, actually all four of the suspects will be in court tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully we'll learn a little bit more, Nicole. And there are so many layers to all of this because as we can see on our screen uh, at the bottom, they were God's misfits group. What This is a religious cult group. What can you tell us uh, about it? Because the accused killers are allegedly part of this group. Yeah, so this is apparently a very, very secretive group in this area. Uh, we did not know that this was part of the puzzle until the affidavits came out. And this is something that uh, investigators discovered that all four of the suspects had in common. Again, the name of the group is God Mis God's Misfits. Uh, and we are told that it is an anti-government group. Uh, that has a religious inf affiliation. Uh, they hold meetings in the area. Uh, and again, all four of the suspects, according to police, were a part of this group. Now, did it actually really have anything to do uh, with the murders? That we don't know. Again, all indications are that the murders were really focused around this custody dispute. Uh, but now that we know that there's this anti-government group involved, God's misfits, uh, it's something that uh, that we're going to continue to look into, Nicole. Yeah, well, we know uh, you will be getting answers. All right, Brian Enton live there in Oklahoma. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button. I couldn't get that lady to pause. I'm so sorry. I hate when she yells in your ears like that. Man, Nicole. Jeez. Nicole with an H, too. Nicole with an H. I, my middle name's Nicole. My best friend's middle name's Nicole, but with an H. <laughs> um, so right before the live came on, or right before we came on the live, a few like around six or seven, I forget what time she comes on. Um, six. Elizabeth Vargas did a um piece with Brian Enton, and they discussed the case and they discuss an interview that he did with Tad's buddy. Um, he's a judge and he refers to himself as Tad's friend. He says, I was, I was Tad's friend. And then he goes, he corrects himself and he says, no, I am Tad's friend. The 
the fudge dude? Really? Like, really? 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 You're going to still say that you guys are friends when he's, you know, um, charged with all these crimes and you're a judge and you can read the PCA? You could put two and two together, you know? Very crazy. But I'm going to go ahead and play this. If you guys don't mind hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check your subscribe your subscriptions tonight. Not just my channel, everyone's channel. Apparently, people were getting unsubscribed from channels earlier tonight, and that's why we had the banner going. But I think everything's kind of good now. So I'll take the banner down. And I'll play this video. Oops, I know this video. I don't know what this is. This lady says, oh, it's just, it's just nonsense. That would have been okay. It was just nonsense. <laughs> I thought it was like a different channel, like Law and Crime or something. <laughs> that was really funny. All right, lots to get to today, but we start in rural Oklahoma with a developing story that has captivated the nation and a News Nation exclusive. As we hear for the first time from a friend of one of the suspects charged in an alleged murderous plot to kill two missing Kansas mothers. Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly vanished April 30th on their way to pick up Butler's two children for a supervised visit. Officials say the murders were the violent escalation of a nasty custody dispute between Butler and her children's grandmother, Tiffany Adams. Adams was arrested along with her boyfriend at Tad Cullum and the married couple Cora and Cole Twombly. Authorities say the four were involved in an anti-government religious group called God's Misfits. The car the mothers were driving was discovered abandoned on a remote Oklahoma road just south of the Kansas border. Officials say there was evidence of a bloody confrontation both inside and outside that car. Investigators discovered two bodies over the weekend. The Oklahoma medical exam. I just thought of this. Um... Isn't, I mean, there's probably not an area that's better to me. I mean, I, I don't know how far the sheriff's department is from here. I mean, I, we could probably look that up. Wouldn't it be better to meet somewhere, anywhere, but that gas station on a desolate highway with no cameras, no nothing? I mean, she had her supervisor with her, but she knows just the month before they tried to get her out of her house to do something. She doesn't know because she didn't go out. But to be like, oh, I'll meet you out here. I mean. Maybe she thought because she had that supervisor, she would be okay. And that's really sad because, like, I mean, anywhere to meet but here. But there doesn't look like there's anything out there. Examiner's the office time. is doing tests to determine their identities and cause of death. Meanwhile, our own Brian Enton spoke exclusively to a local judge in the area who says he's a friend of Tad Cullum's. Brian Enton joins us now live from Elkhart, Kansas. Brian, what did he tell you? Yeah, Elizabeth, uh, this judge is in shock, just like everyone else. He says that he has seen suspect Tad Cullum almost every single day for the last couple of weeks because they're in business together, they're friends. He was even at Tad Cullum's house uh, when the raid went down, when the SWAT team showed up. Uh, so he's in disbelief, uh, says that no one around here can believe that any of this uh, has happened. And I also asked him about that cult group, God's Misfits, uh, what he knows about that. Take a listen. The way I understand it is they got God behind them and they make their own laws. But now, again, that's hearsay. Uh, I, I, I never knew about them. That's what you're hearing from other people in town. That's what I'm hearing from other people. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still, I'll say it again, I'm blown away that this even happened. I, I just can't. Tad was a very good friend of mine. I'm not going to say was a very good friend of mine. He is a good friend of mine. But this just blew me away. And it, and it's interesting. The judge said that he did not even know about God's misfits. But now that the uh, the police reports have come out and people are talking about it, he's realizing the people he knows uh, were actually in the group that he didn't even realize. And we've learned that they even held meetings. Uh, they held meetings at, at a school uh, on the uh, Oklahoma-Texas state line. Uh, so more information coming out about that group really by by the minute as people start to realize that that those people are actually living in their community. Uh, Elizabeth? Yeah, we're going to delve into that group, God's Misfits, and other anti-government groups in just a moment. But you also shot some exclusive video near where the two bodies were discovered. What can you tell us about that location? 
Yeah, it was difficult to find. We've spent the last 24 hours or so trying to find this specific spot. And it's just so rural out here. We finally were able to uh, to get to that area where the two moms were discovered. Uh, take a look. We, we just shot this video a little while ago. Sources tell us the mom's bodies uh, were discovered in a very, very remote area. It's down this dirt road, uh, and it's about eight and a half miles from where the mom's car was found. And this is the property right here, uh, that barn that you see in the distance. Our sources say the bodies were found near that barn under a dam. Uh, the owner hey, of that's... this land had... Okay, someone help me out with the dam part. The dam has to be something different. Has to be different than what we're normally thinking of, like a regular dam. Also, my girls are in here. My dogs, they came in when I was like on the, I took, um, grabbed a drink whenever we were on the, um, on the um, video there. Sorry. Couldn't think of for a second. Wow, guys, I must be getting sleepy tonight. But we saw this picture. Um, I have it. I just have it bookmarked. But um, we saw a picture of this barn. So that, or like the, um, I don't know what that's called. The little building there. So I'll pull that up while we're playing this because we do have a picture of that in a different spot. At least the land to suspect Tad Cullum and the bodies were discovered over the weekend. I talked to the property owner, Elizabeth. He says that he was leasing that that land to Tad Cullum, uh, that he also knew him very well, was totally shocked when, when those moms went missing and then could not believe it when investigators showed up to his property uh, and started digging and then discovered the mom's bodies. This Elizabeth. is such a bizarre story. Brian Enton all over it. Thank you so much reporting live from Oklahoma. Thanks so much for watching. I knew she was going to get me. I'm just trying to find this for you guys. Um, oh, wait, no. Okay, I'm on the wrong page. I almost like exit out of here. Is it this one? Yeah, okay, there it is. I guess it's pretty much the same, but it's like zoomed in a lot. What the hell is the dam? I want to know what that is. <laughs> hey, wait, Renee might know. What's the, what's the dam? It's a creek with high sides. Oh, that's what a dam is. I'm telling you, she said, I'm sorry. I didn't look at the chat. I know I always ask a question that I never look at the chat. Like I should, you know, I'm just like, I'm so bad about that. And I had to spell wrath king like that. <laughs> I don't think the car was moved. No, Liz. I think the car was there. I thought maybe the car was moved too, but, um, I thought maybe they moved a vehicle on the flatbed and put them in the vehicle, but now I don't know. I was just reading. Um, it's a creek with like high sides. Okay. It's a creek with no water and high sides. Yes. Okay. If we're out here. That's what it is. Okay. I knew it was something different than what I was thinking. Cause I'm like, there's no, how do you do that? <laughs> I'm thinking water and, you know, okay. It's a creek with no water with high sides. I gotcha. Okay. I don't know if we call that in Ohio. I think we just call that an empty creek bed. <laughs> oh, you live down the road? Oh, wow. I knew you were close because the way you were talking and stuff. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's good to know. I'm sure you know the area very well then. I mean, you're from there. So it's just so open. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen... Like you can see miles and miles away. It looks like we have little hills here in Ohio, nothing big, just little ones. But you think, you know, I mean, you can just see for miles. Yeah, is anyone else here? Well, is anyone else here from where? You, where else is everyone from? Actually, just put it in the chat. But yeah, this is the picture that we had. Um, and we're not sure, but this could be the skid steer over here. We're just not sure what this thing is at this point. I still don't know. It could be that. It could not be that. I don't know. You're on the East Coast, so am I. So, uh, so am I. Um, let me go ahead and put it on the next video. So she had like a double video with um, Brian Enton. So she did the first half. We just watched it. And then the second half will be here. Um, let me share this and not share it. <laughs> okay. God's Misfits really a shadowy, dangerous. I don't want to know. I really want to know about that God's Misfits group. I wonder if it's just, I think it's just them five. I don't think it's anyone else. I mean, there might be other groups that are called that, but I'm, I have a feeling it was just these guys, maybe, maybe, um, Lacey and Barrett cook as well. That 
might conspire to, for, to perform other acts of violence? Or might the group merit federal investigation? What are they? And are, are they what they say they are? Misfits who should be left alone to practice their constitutionally guaranteed rights, even if some of their adherents have been charged with double murder. We're joined now by Josh School, a former agent with the FBI and current president of Bow Wave, a national security firm. Um, Josh, great to have you here. So the mission statement. I'm going to use that law. I'm going to use that rule whenever I get pulled over next time. I'm going to say, nope, laws don't apply to me. And for this group, God's Misfits, has this testimonial on its website from one member. I don't try to fit into social circles where I don't belong. I don't consider myself normal, and I hope never to be. Have you ever heard of this group? Elizabeth, I had not heard of this group until it was reported in the affidavit. But I also know that there, unfortunately, is a large sentiment, anti-government sentiment, uh, raging through this country right now. And it seems to have a platform on social media and other places where it's being perpetuated. How often do these anti-government groups commit violence? Well, that's where it begins to cross the line. And it's a, it's a balance for law enforcement to make sure that they are protecting civil liberties, the right to free speech. But then once it crosses into violence, which this clearly has uh, with the two murders, then, then uh, federal authorities do get involved. Yeah, I guess what's most striking about this is there are at least as of now four people involved in this. This was an elaborately planned murder. They were buying tasers at the store. They were buying burner phones. They traveled to Hugoton, Texas to try and kill her, Veronica Butler, in her home or outside her home and failed that first attempt. This was a carefully long planned thing involving several people. It was involving several people, and all four are in custody that we are aware of right now. But I also think that law enforcement intentionally put God's uh, misfits in the affidavit as this investigation continues. They will be looking at others that could have conspired to support them, to provide them financial resources or other means to perpetuate this crime. Yeah, there was that infamous case that was chronicled in the book Under the Banner of Heaven, where a fundamentalist Mormon sect that started out as anti-tax and anti-government morphed into committing murder. Do you see any parallels between that group in, in Utah and this group called God's Misfits in Oklahoma? Well, I think in the coming days, we will learn a lot more about God's Misfits and who was involved and who may have been part of supporting this uh, heinous act. Right now, what we really have is a custody battle with four people that plan to kill two women, which is horrific. Uh, and so I think over the next couple of weeks, we will find out more about God's misfits and others. These anti-government groups are often quite shadowy. How do you investigate them? How do you get in and get access? Well, it's tough. And, and again, as I mentioned before, you have to protect civil liberties. People have the right to free speech. But eventually somebody will talk. Somebody will be on social media. Somebody will say something that leads uh, investigators, whether it's uh, state and locals or federal investigators, and they've crossed the line into perpetuating violence, planning violence, planning some sort of attack on a government facility that really crosses that line that allows investigators to do a full-blown investigation. Yeah, explain the psychology of that. Once you think this small law, like I have to pay my taxes or I have to go the speed limit, doesn't apply to me, it's very easy to see how that begins to morph into all these bigger laws like theft, like, and God forbid, murder might also not apply to me. There are a host of groups uh, out there on the domestic extremist side that don't believe that the laws of the land uh, uh, apply to them. So you, you have to balance again, what are they doing? What are the smaller crimes that state and local law enforcement would investigate? Speeding, refusing to pay fines, you know, uh, liens on properties. And then it, as that aggregates or actually becomes more pervasive, federal authorities usually involved with state and local law enforcement as a part of their the joint terrorism task forces on the FBI side, will start to take a look at some of these groups and see what else is going on. Yeah, there is word that more people may have actually been involved in the planning and execution of these two murders. There are still questions about the father of the children, even though he was in rehab. Did he know anything or was he also just a victim of his own mother's machinations? Yeah, that's uh, that was clear in the affidavit that his alibi, he was in, in rehab. However, there's also a statement in there that talks about how his mother. I guess he was I got I got some information on that.
because you know how we were talking and it said um, that there's no contact. There was a no contact rehab. Like he was in no contact. And I, and I said, well, they can't really give you no contact. Like, you know, they don't even do that to prisoners. Like they let them have mail. They let them make phone calls, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess so this was at six months he's in there, but the first 30 days is no contact. And then after the 30 days, he can call, write, do all that stuff. But from what I'm gathering, he went in, I'm going to check the, the paperwork right now. I think he went in the end of March, around the mid, like the mid of March. I'll have to check. But um, he would have been in there and not 30 days wouldn't have passed. So he wouldn't have had any contact with his family. It was going to take care of this. So what did I have he that know? Right. That's a pretty incriminating it's, statement. It's a very incriminating statement. And so, and who else knew, uh, you know, were there others supporting them? And who... Who did not report this as they should have, knowing that violence is about to be perpetrated? Yeah, I think and, and, I'm, I'm struck in the affidavit by how many people were interviewed and said they knew something was happening or that the grandmother was going to take care of Veronica Butler. We wouldn't have to worry about Veronica Butler any longer in this custody dispute over the six-year-old and eight-year-old child. March 22nd. Well. Thank you, Renee, for and the so super This investigation ha that. is not complete. Uh, yeah. They have solved the murder. But it has a long way to go before they have ferreted out everybody that could have been involved. And thanks so much for watching. Go to join. Okay. Um, so that was all the like the News Nation clips I wanted to show you guys. Um, but basically, and thank you for the super sticker, Renee. I, really, I appreciate that um, so very much. So Veronica, Jillian are going their way, you know, to pick up the kids. They get diverted off of their path by Cole and Cora. They get diverted onto another road, a side road. They go down that road approximately a thousand feet, we're assuming, because everything was kind of right there outside the car. Um, they ended up somehow they took blows to the head. I'm assuming it was the head because they bled a lot and it was puddles. I'm just assuming that it was that's what was hid hitting. Maybe when they hit the ladies, maybe they hit them with the hammer. I don't know. But the hammer was broke out there beside the vehicle. Now, to break a hammer, that, you, that's a lot of force you got to use, I would think, to break a hammer. Unless it's just a junky old hammer. I mean, you know, but I would think that they would have, you know, newer things. It's just, it's weird to me. Um, I want to know, I want to know about that broken hammer. Um, I also wonder if Tiffany bought stun guns because she wanted to subdue them, not necessarily unalive them there. Now, I don't know if shit got crazy and they ended up unaliving them there. Um, but we'll find that out, you know, with, with court documents, with um, trials, with with everything. We're going to learn more and more. And we actually learned a lot in this PCA. I mean, a whole lot, a whole, whole lot. Um, let me see if there's anything else. So they did confirm tonight that the um, that the bodies that were recovered from the underneath the dam in the. Um, that were buried, they were, they were Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. So, um, we kind of knew that was what it was. We did know, but you know, it's always a sad situation whenever you see it like black and white. Um, so I'm going to actually play this because I wanted to play this video too. It's only an hour and 56 minutes. It's going to tell us a little bit more about Tiffany Adams and what she does locally in the area. So these people really aren't, aren't messing around. Like they may look a little crazy and they are a little crazy, but they're cunning. They're some, they're smooth or something because they're able to hold chair seats, like chairman seats in their, like, you know, an office and they're able to, you know, um, touch elbows or whatever you, whatever you call it with the judges and stuff. It's just, it's, it's almost like another Myrtle. Look at that. A mystery that captured the attention of the whole country is unraveling in Oklahoma. Investigators believe two missing moms who vanished in the Oklahoma panhandle are no longer alive. And four suspects are now locked up accused of murder. One of the suspects was in a custody battle with one of the victims. KFCO's Abigail Ogle here in studio. Abby, you've just learned that suspect has ties to the Oklahoma Republican Party. Evan, Jess, we have a lot to get to here, starting with Tiffany Adams. One of the suspects is the paternal grandmother of Veronica Butler's children. 
According to court documents, Butler and Adams were in a custody battle. Veronica and Jillian Kelly were on their way to pick up those children before they disappeared. And new at five, we are learning that Tiffany Adams is the current Republican chairman for Cimarron County. She was elected last year by her fellow Republicans in that county. State Senator and the state's leader for the GOP, Nathan Dom, told us tonight that it's a tragic situation that innocent children are at the center of this case, saying, quote, the Oklahoma Republican Party has no personal relationship with Adams or anyone involved in this senseless We don't crime, know where they said, said we don't claim do know of her role as Cimarron County Chair. Tiffany Adams, Tad Collum, Cole and Cora Toombley are all in jail on two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping and one count of conspiracy to commit murder. I swear that guy During is their smiling. Search for Butler and that guy with the beard, he's smiling. I mean, the mustache handlebar. Ashley said the worst kind of worst attempt at a handlebar mustache she's ever seen. That's true. Kelly over the weekend, investigators did find two bodies which have been sent to the medical examiner's office to be identified. But again, OSBI confirming with us yesterday, they do not believe that the two women are alive anymore. Tonight at six o'clock, we're actually there in Texas County in the Oklahoma panhandle as this investigation continues. And we're looking ahead to the court date tomorrow for these suspects. What's going to happen? I'm so sorry. That was probably really loud. Oh, thank you, Squeaky Wheel. I appreciate that. Thank you. My favorite chat channel. Thank you for the $25. I appreciate that. Great folks in here. I actually relax after a long work day coming in here and chatting with friends. Oh, I love your personality, Squeaky Wheel. You do have the, you have the best personality. I see it in the chat. <laughs> I see it in the chat. You're very sarcastic like me. I feel like you have that like sarcasm. I just, I read some of the chats sometimes. I, like I don't ever read them back, which is crazy. I should do that. But um, like I'll read them like while we're doing like lives and I'll just like, I'll kind of giggle, but I will go back and watch this one. That's very sweet. Thank you, Squeaky. I appreciate that. I'll make sure the girls get something since they're in here. I got one dog here, one dog here. They came in while we were um, we were talking about the case. But you can't see the other one because she's she's in a donut bed. She's so sweet. But thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate that, Squeaky Wheel. I, mean, I appreciate you being in here every night. I really do. I love you guys being in here every night. I know that, you know, there's core group that comes in and we're all here every single night. And I love that. Um, when I like, you know, when I first started doing lives, nobody was in here. It was, I was actually, I started my lives in this room because I started my like YouTube, like out there in the kitchen, but I, yeah, it was in this room. It was actually right here in this corner, right there on the floor. I used to sit on the floor. Your girl used to sit on the floor. I didn't care. I look cute sitting there on the floor. You got to miss a lot of the juice if you don't go back and read our conversations. I know I need to. I need to read them. <laughs> so actually, Summer used to be good at that. I'm not gonna lie, she used to be good at that. She would just tell me the she'd give me the rundown. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I should go back, but I I don't like listening to myself. I feel like some sort of way, so that's why I never go back and watch. I think I've only watched like went back and watched like one live. Um, that's pretty bad, isn't it? I should probably watch them. You know, could give myself some cur cr constructive criticism. I told Vincent to do that. <laughs> I said, you should give me some. That's so funny. And I love that you guys are here every night. I mean, we literally, you know, hang out every evening. And I love that. I was reading the chat a little bit. Um, yes. Old, oh, old mustachio. Yep. Yeah, Ashley. Yeah, he's that guy. That the worst attempt at a mustache I've ever seen at a handlebar mustache at that. So the, that wasn't the video I actually wanted to show you guys. The video I wanted to show you, it showed um, a picture of Tiffany, you know, before and after. She, they all look a little different, you know. Um, we went through their pictures not too long ago and I showed you what they look like. Um, I don't know if I can find them on the Facebook group right away or not. Let's see. I don't think they are. Yeah, there's one. Okay. So this is Tiffany in better days with extensions. She got her hair, hair, her hair's, her hair's doing it for her. She's happy. Look at her. She's so happy. She got her gum in her mouth. She's never going to chew gum again. Um, she got her hair in. Her hair's definitely, definitely in. I mean, look at her here. Definitely got uh, something else going on there. Actually, this is 2015. That's why. Never mind. She fell from grace. This is nine years ago. 
No wonders. I look a lot different than I probably did nine years ago too. I probably do. I hope I don't. <laughs> I said I probably do, but I hope I don't. Um, let's see if we can find the other two. Cause they, they had the couple, we had the picture of the, um, Cole and Cora right here. Look at them too. I want the dog. I'll take the dog. Now look at that handlebar mustache there. He's probably pretty proud of it that day. I think the day before they were arrested, it was his birthday and he danced with his wife. He set out in the yard and he had a good life and no dude, not anymore. You probably did have a good life back when you had one, but I don't think you're getting out of jail anytime soon. I hate to say that to you, bro. Um, I'm just going to go through these and bookmark them while we're just chit-chatting. Does anybody have any questions, concerns, comments? I'm okay. I used to, this is so weird. You guys are going to think I'm gross, but I used to work at this pizza place. Me and my mom worked there. And I swear I'm smelling it right now. Like I'm smelling it, but I don't know where, it, unless Vincent made pizza. I'm going to have to go out there and look. Cause it's, it's, I've been smelling it for the past five minutes. I'm like, I keep wanting to smell my shirt or like, you know, I feel like it's me, but it's not. I don't, I haven't made pizza and I don't smell like pizza. I don't think. Maybe I do. Maybe I smell like a big old pizza oven. No, it's just weird. I'm like, what does that smell? So tomorrow morning, they are going to be in court. We are going to cover that. Let me see if they're going to be live. They should be live. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out for you guys. Though. I'll figure it out for all of us. I'm just like sitting here like, what? What do I need to look up? Um, I wonder if it'll be on the document. Like on her document. Um, Looks like I exit out of that. I did. Because I know they're going tomorrow at 9.30 Central. So it'll be 10.30 my time. So I'm going to make sure that um, we we cover it. So if you want to watch, you know, you can. Um, if not, catch it on a replay. Because it's going to be a it's going to be a good show. I mean, you know, should be anyway. So um, what else was I going to say? I don't know. I think that's all. Who's mom? My mom? My mom's not. I wish she was. Wish that woman was. Whose mom's visiting them? I'm jealous. Look at me. I'm over here like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's definitely, or veneers. Maybe she got veneers or something on where they like cap your teeth. Tiffany could have had a rough menopause. And have Liz, I think, I don't think it was rough menopause. I think it was drugs. I think it was meth. I don't know. Joining the misfits groups must age you decades. Yeah, I'm like, I'm thinking maybe it was the rugs instead. I mean, I don't know. She can dress up, yeah. I mean, I guess we all can, but you know, we I do we? Do we really? Ever? No. I wore this today with a pair of uh shorts that were dark navy blue with this color, little smiley face on it. I don't know what's up with this thing, but I like it. <laughs> it says Smiley Academy. I don't know. It's cute. It has a smiley face on it. How can you not love a shirt with a smiley face? Oh, what date was this photo? It was 2015. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I didn't realize it was that old because people have been flashing that picture. I'm like, well, no wonders why people are flashing that one. She looked good in them days. You know, that's a, that's a little while ago. Let me see if there's anything on Twitter. We usually do that. But, um, we're going to go. We're going to hit up some cases. Let me tell you what cases are. We got so much to catch up on. Okay. So we have this case tomorrow morning that we have to, you know, we're going to do the live for that. Um, if they are streaming it live, if they're not, then we'll just do it on a replay. Um, you know, yeah, we'll just do it on a replay. So I want to do Riley Strand. I want to cover that case again a little bit. Um, his mom's come out. There's a couple things that have come out, but then his mom's come out and said that he left her a text message that night saying that his drink tasted funny. Now, I don't know if he really texted her that or if she's a grieving mother that doesn't want to give up on like thinking that her son fell into a river while drunk. Um, it's one of the, one or the two. I don't know. I, I can see it both ways. Cause I mean, I've grieved before. Um, so I don't know. I, oh, I'm going to, I want to watch the news nation clip that they did. They did one with her. I want to I want to review it and watch it. So, I mean, 
um, I feel really bad for his mom. And I think it might be more of like a, like, I don't know, maybe I'm the one that's going nuts. Maybe, maybe there is a big, like something behind all this, but I don't know. Like, but his mom is just now saying this, Ashley, why didn't his mom say this since jump? If this was true, like, I mean, really though, like it, I hate to say that, like, I don't know to me personally, it seems like a grieving mother, but we'll review all of it. And, you know, maybe we'll, we'll find something I don't see, but I don't know. I just think that, um, if he, if he would have said that to his mom, as soon as Luke Bryan's bar was dinged for this, she would have came out and said, yeah, my son didn't drown. He said his, his drink tasted funny. My son didn't do this. He said his drink tasted funny. Why did his drink taste funny? Wouldn't you say that like a lot? Wouldn't you say like my, my, my son, my son didn't, his drink tasted funny. He told me that here's the text message right here. Look at this right here. I mean, she's saying this months later, like a month to month or so later. I'm just wondering. And I think it was dry drowning personally, but that's just me. Um, I think this, I, I personally think that it's, a, I, I personally think it's a grieving thing and that's just what I think. I mean, um, I, Yvonne, it was my first case. They, there was a dry drowning Kylie Rodney. It was the biggest case to hit YouTube since YouTube. I felt like, I mean, that case brought in me, <laughs> brought in the riff raff. It brought me in. <laughs> I think that's what it is in a way, Danielle. They just want someone to blame. Yeah. Like, I really think that. Like, I just, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I just, I don't, I've, I've grieved and I've been there, but I haven't been there as a parent. So if I've been there as a daughter and been like over the edge almost, like, you know what I mean? Like, I can only imagine the parent. I just don't see her like seeing that message and not bringing that forward way before now. And I don't know. I mean, I, I just think that this, I think that he went down there to maybe pee and that's why his belt was undone. Um, maybe that's when his ID fell out when he went and took his pants down a little bit. Maybe it was in his pocket. Like the family friend said, I told him every time when he was out, don't put his ID in his wallet, put it in his front pocket. So no one steals it or something. He said, put his ID in his card in his pocket. So, and even said in that picture, it looks like his cards in his pocket. Well, if you pull your pants down with a credit card in your pocket, isn't it going to fall out? I know it's going to fall out of mine or damn near, you know? My first live. Oh, it's it's in there somewhere. Actually, if you go to my live tap and go to oldest, I was nervous. Yeah. I didn't have anybody in my life. I don't think. <laughs> Who knows if I even if, if I had any views on it. Let me see if I can go to I think I have to go to like my page, like my channel. And then if you go to lives. Yeah, so I'll show you. Okay. So oh my gosh, I don't even want to show you guys. I've I've never deleted a video off of my channel. I've only privated one live and it was because I did it over a subscriber, like their story. And, um, I just wanted, I just wanted to make that one like privated, you know, just out of respect. Um, but that's the only video I've ever even privated. So if you go to my page and you go to lives, if you go to oldest, let's see, there's me is look, I did, a, I did a clothing high. Oh, I thought it was a clothing, clothing haul, but it wasn't, it was just my clothes were in here. Um, Look, 20 views, 101 views, 55 views. Look at that. Look at me. Yeah. Looks like I started during the summer. Yeah, that was on the floor. See, there I am. But I had like so many different backgrounds. Like your girls had a lot. She was really skinny there. <laughs> Take me back. Oh, look, there's the dogs. Oh, this is when I used to have my iPad, I think. And I would sit my iPad up like right here beside me and play videos from it. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know, but it was fun. It was fun. Go back and check it out. Look, I even have an eye patch when I first came in. Can't stop, won't stop. Had a surgery. Look at this. Smack on an eye patch. Look at that. <laughs> I only needed it on for like a week. Look at that. I did my videos. Still did them. Target. Shopping with me at Target. Yeah, there's me in my blue chair. Yeah, this is like, this. those are old school. Those are really, oh, look, what's this? Leilani, first quarter parents. And we're going to go back over her, actually. She was at court today. So for motions hearings. So we're going to cover, like I was trying, I was telling you for the longest time, then we got into Riley. So I want to cover Riley's case again, because maybe there's something there that I didn't see. I don't know. Um, 
but I want to go through that one. I want to go through Leilani Simons. So maybe we'll do those in one night. Um, I want to go over Sebastian's case. And then we still have that other Idaho four um, podcast to go through or video to go through. So, and I want to, I need to put the first one out too. So yeah, this is my page before, before I knew anything about anything, but I still don't know a lot. Been there, wanted to fight the doctors who prescribed my son the psych meds that made him gain weight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I was relieved when time to sue went past so I could let it go. I just want it nicer. Um, headstone, but I'll wait. Oh, I've been there. My, my dad didn't have one for like a headstone for like six years. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't, it was like four. It was like four. My aunt and uncle bought it and, uh, it meant the world to me. I was so humbled and like humbled. And then my mom wasn't buried for a couple years, I want to say a year, two. And then my, um, my boyfriend helped me do that celebration of life party for her. So you can't beat that. Thanks, Mary Beth. These glasses, you guys actually helped me pick these bad boys out. They're like two-toned. So on the top, they're like brown. And then on the bottom, they're more like a green. Solo. I did watch that, Janet. I meant to tell you. Oh my gosh. So Solo sent me a video today and it was about this little girl with a bionic eye. And I'm like, don't need to tell me anymore. Let me watch. Solo, next time you send me a video about a bionic eye, check the price of that thing first. Got me excited. I want to glow in the dark eye now. But they're like $150,000 to like $500,000. I was like, oh my God, I just want to play with one. I was like, you know, just try it out. But this little girl, she was nine years old. Um, she was on like this, this um, television, like she was getting interviewed and she had a bionic eye and she could match her other pupil up. It would match up her pupils, like expand them or, you know, tighten them. And it would give her more movement in her eye, her prosthetic. And I was like, that's really cool. So I'm sitting there listening to it. And then she says, mine glows in the dark. And I'm like, say what? I was like, that must look weird. Then I saw it and it looked so cool. Well, I looked it up online and it said 150,000. Maybe it was, maybe it's cheaper. That's how much mine cost. If they're 4,900, I'm getting me one. That's how much these ones cost, I think. Like a regular one. Yeah, hey, little girl, can I borrow your eye? I want to try it out. Yeah, Ashley, I mean, come on. Give me that. Give me the eye. I mean, really, those are expensive if that's true. Now, I wonder if it has any sort of like mechanism on it or if it's just like a regular prosthetic eye. I'm so curious. It's by, it's considered bionic because it like moves and does like things like that. Like, yeah. I know I just want to play with one now. <laughs> really bad. I just want to try it out. Just try it out for a minute. Let me try. Um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. I know that they're starting to um, make them like that, where they're very like futuristic. I don't want something that looks futuristic, though. Like her eye looks futuristic. That's the only down part I didn't prefer. I mean, I think she's a beautiful little girl and she's rocking that, that, that eye. And all the little boys are going to think she's cool as hell. But me being like an adult, I, I, it was just so bionic and like crazy looking. It was so cool. If you can match up your real eye to that one, that'd be cool. But yes, it dilates. Yeah. I think that's so cool too. Are you covering the court cases tomorrow? Yes. Yep. Yes, I sure am. I'm going to, so I'll be on, if they stream it, I'll be on around like 10, 15, 10, 20. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Janet, or not Janet, um, Janet, did you send me that on Twitter? On Twitter? Mm -hmm. I think it was Twitter. Oh, Jan done wrote me on Twitter forever ago. Oh, yeah, that wasn't forever ago. That was just on the 12th, but I always, I never check my messages, but I just happened to see, here we go. Here it is. Is this it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll play the, or I'll, I'll link the video. I don't think it'll get me, but it might. Um, but it's really cool. This little girl's bionic eye here. I'll paste it in there. You guys can watch it. Oh yeah. There's two. I have another one laying on the floor right here in her donut bed. I have two donut beds on the floor. Actually, let me see. I think I took a picture earlier. I'll show it to you guys before I jump off. And I don't know why it looks, this makes it look like this lamp makes it look like it's smoky in this room, but we don't smoke. 
but it looks like it almost. I don't know why. It must be the, the lighting, but I'll show you a picture. And then I'll put the link in there again too. Oh, they're both sleeping. They're they're so cute. My animals are the cutest. I think everyone says that, don't they? So this was them earlier today. So as I'm getting ready, this is me getting ready for the live and I couldn't wake them up. I don't know why it looks smoky back here, but it is. But look at the cat in the bed. There's the cat and then the two dogs. Those are Those are my animals. Those are my babes. They really are. I, um, the brown one can't get life, can't, can't get through life without me. She really can't. She's laying here sleeping right now. She's, she's older and she just like needs me, you know, like when you need your mom, that's that dog. She just really, she really needs me. So she like won't go eat by herself. She won't go drink anything. She just, and I'm just like, let me look at her. Like I'll just look at her and I know exactly what she wants. And I'm just like, let me get it for her. So just fed your black lab. Oh, vanilla ice cream with whipped cream on top. That's so funny. I just had grapes, grapes earlier. And I was like, no, you can't have any because they're very toxic for dogs. And I was like, let me look that up because I think that they're toxic for you. Then so I was like, you didn't give them any, did you? I'm like, no. I was like, no, I always check before I give them anything. So they do need me, Ashley. They're my peeps. They're my people, you know. I'm going to tell you a really cute story. She's 10, so she's not really that old. But she's six or seven or eight. Oh, wait, six or seven. And then, yeah, 10, the brown one. But they, they're they my everything. They really are. They I, I hang out with them every day. I talk to them. We hang out. So I'll tell you a funny little story that are like something that dogs do that I didn't know this. And now that I know, I can't not know. So whenever you're going to the bathroom, right? And this is any animal. Cats do it too. Cause my cat does it every time. If I'm going to the bathroom, like they'll push that door open and they'll come in like the, it, they have like a routine. I don't know what it is, but it's the gray one. The gray one walks out. The brown one walks in the brown one walks out. And I just thought it was them just being them, you know, but apparently dogs follow you to the bathroom because they're your pack. They're part of your pack. And so when they're in a pack, they will, use each other to go to the bathroom so that one can watch for prey. So they do that for you to you because they love you and they care about you and they're trying to protect you while you're going to the bathroom. It's like a protect a protection thing. It's not them just being nosy. And when I heard that, like it said on the video, like one of these days you're going to miss them coming in the bathroom with you. And I was like, really? Because I hate hearing that kind of stuff. Yeah, they guard each other. They were they guard you in the bathroom. I was like, really? That's what they're doing. I don't know. It just makes you so sad to think that like they're guarding me and they do the same thing every time the gray one and the brown one. And then the cat, that cat runs this show. He's probably out there sitting on something he shouldn't be sitting on. She is Araya. Yeah. I thought oh, she has opened her eyes. Her name's Araya, isn't it? She's passed out. She's not really opening them. And then that's Mia. Yeah. They're my crazy girls, but I love them. But thank you guys all for talking to me tonight. At the end, that was fun. Ooh, raisins. Yeah. The, my dogs will get into anything. Your dog's your shadow design rhythm. My dog's my shadow. Oh, this one, the big one. Yeah. And she stops. She stops and she'll be sideways and I'll go to trip over her. Like she'll be behind, like behind me. I'll turn around real quick and I'm like, there she is. There she is. <laughs> Danielle, I was so weirded out by that when I first got mine. Then I thought to myself, well, I always watch him when he's taking a dump. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm always be watching my dogs. I'm like, why am I watching you guys do this? Just make sure everything's cool. Make sure I'm, oh. the other day was hell with these dogs outside. There, everybody decided to walk their dog at the same time. Oh, I am. Uh, Actually, I feel the same way about my cat. I really do. I'm like, can I go before him? Maybe <laughs> like when that happens, I mean, I, I'll probably take a lot of time off, but not a lot, you know, a lot. My cat's my everything. My cat's 16. He's my, he's my most like, I don't want to call him prized possession because he's not a possession. He's my cat, but you know, he really is. He's my, I've had him since I, my dad, like right after my dad passed away. So he's been through everything with me. I love that cat. 
Oh, you lost him in September. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina. Losing an animal is really hard. Like, they're your family. They, they're your family. They really are. And I know that cat, I'm, I'll miss his meow. I'll miss his paws clicking because he's got a little arthritis. <laughs> when he comes and follows me for treats, he will he'll hunt you down. He, I'll miss him messing with the dogs, but I know that they can't live forever. <gasps> nah, really? Liz, they were, he was forced, forced to resign? The judge. Oh, I didn't see that. Wow. We're just over here talking about dogs. and Wow. Well, probably because he was at their home. Huh. Brent will be six on September 9th, 29th. Oh, he's young. You need a doggy cam. I really want to get a dog. I have a doggy cam. I mean, I have like a webcam that I can hook up. I just need to hook it up and then put it like like on the side of the desk somewhere where you can see like that area. And then you can, I can bring in the beds and stuff and they'll come in. Hmm. And then you guys will have like a cat cam, a dog cam or something. I think that would be fun, but something different to look at than looking at me. Hmm. My dogs are tired of listening to crime. Mine are probably, I don't know. Mine kind of like it. Mine are asleep. Mine are asleep. You may have to take some time off from it. I understand that, Liz. I took, <laughs> this isn't nothing. But I took a day and a half off, and I know that's like not a lot. <laughs> it's a day and a half, right? But I felt like a new person. I needed that day and a half. And then I ended up taking like a vacation. So I ended up getting like a week off, but I really needed that week off. Um, it really it reset me. It made me feel more level headed. I wasn't going into chats getting angry. I was getting, I was not, not I was getting getting angry in this chat, not other chats, this chat. <laughs> Because it, it was like Idaho 4 and it was craziness. You know what I mean? It was like we were getting all kinds of crazy people in the chat. And then I would have to like combat them, even though I should just like ignore it. I couldn't ignore it. <laughs> so I'm glad I take, took that vacation. That might freak him out. Yeah. That would be kind of fun, though, to have a remote controlled one. Or like a little camera. I talk to my animals through Alexa when I'm not at home. All my animals would be freaking out. I used to do that through the video camera, but they never really heard me, I don't think. But I'm going to jump off of here. Um, it's midnight here in Ohio. I don't know what time it is where you are, but it's it's midnight here. Um, I'm going to jump off here and take my dogs out for the last time, unless they're good to go. I don't, they'll get up as soon as I get up. Um, but you guys have a great evening. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm sorry about the first live. We don't know what was going on with YouTube, but if you guys don't mind taking a second, hit the like button. It does work now. Um, and subscribe to the channel again, because if it was unsubscribing, I guess everybody, there was like 10 of you guys that came in tonight and said it. And I was surprised because I normally don't throw YouTube under the bus. I normally say it's me because it's usually me, but I guess YouTube does mess around. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. Um, I'm going to post, you'll see the post um, by the morning. If I'm going to do the live, I'll make sure that it's scheduled ahead of time and gives you guys some time to see it. Um, but I'm going to look up now, see if it's going to be live or not. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. Have a good evening and good night. Bye guys.